Sound, sound transmission class. Why don't PESIPs necessarily act really well in sound? They do. They work great in sound when sound is carried on air, which is where the vast majority of sound goes through wall assemblies, is on air, the cracks and the leaks in your assembly. Why then is con do they not have great numbers? They don't have great numbers because when we test walls for sound, we test them in four areas. Uh, frequency and energy, it's a chart. Low frequency, low energy, low frequency, high energy, high frequency, low yeah, four corners, right? STC numbers are a makeup of those four areas of testing. In a SIP assembly, it works really well all the way until you get to high energy, high, or high energy, low frequency. Think of the truck car driving by with the thumping sound and that's high energy, low frequency that you can feel the thump in your chest. It's very similar to contact sound because it's very close to that energy and low frequency which is the contact on the diaphragm and because a SIP is a diaphragm in that it is a composite structure, when the sound hits it, it transmits through. People that live in SIP houses will often say it's the quietest house they've ever lived in. Not because it's got a great STC number, because it doesn't, because of that contact sound issue, but because it's very airtight and therefore the majority of the sounds don't get through. Okay? If we're worried about sound, we often add mass. And when we do add that mass, we want to disassociate that mass from the SIP by virtue of the hi-hat channel or the standoffs or something that don't allow then you know, a big thick uh, concrete skin to be attached to it for mass and it's still in contact with the SIP, right? We still have that same problem. It's still a composite solid structure. So we want to disassociate that. 